Hi everyone, Nick here, and today I come to you with a response to a viewer question over on YouTube. Um, one of my videos is about how to analyze select all, that applies, uh, select all that applies survey data when it comes from places like Microsoft Forms or Google Forms. You might also have access to more sophisticated survey software like Alchemer or SurveyMonkey. In those Alchemer or SurveyMonkey platforms, you can set uh, your, your export settings so that your select all that apply questions will export as sort of one and zero data. So ones and zeros. It's really easy then to analyze those in Excel. Just sum down the column and you get your, your frequency uh, for your, your sort of frequency distribution for each of those questions. This video right here shows you how to analyze, uh, shows you how to export that data and sort of analyze those data using some formulas to get those into columns because uh, platforms or software like Microsoft Forms and Google Forms, they do not export uh, select all that apply data yet quite like those other forms. So this is what we're going to do here. I got a question over here from Liz Martin uh, down on the comments. I'm going to scroll down here. She says, is there a way to set this up so it's a little more automated? For instance, I have a survey that is continuing to collect new responses and will be reanalyzing periodically. How can I streamline this so that I can just add the new data to the sheet without needing to redo the later analysis steps? OK, so there are a few different ways that I would think about doing this, but none of them are particularly easy. They will be easy later on down the road, but they're going to take just a little bit of time to set up the sheet. And I think the, the easiest ways that I've done this in the past is just by using pivot tables. And we have another video about how to start using pivot tables, and I'll link that above and below. I hope you go and check that one out. I'm going to show you how I would do this with the data set, a uh, similar data set that I used for this select all that apply video right here. So I'm going to go down here. We're going to open that Excel file, and I'm going to show you what it looks like here. So OK, Liz, so this is how I would think about it. So right now we have our survey ID right here in column A. So that's just the respondents, the number of respondents that I have. And then we have the select all that apply data over here. So remember, this question was something like, um, you know, which fruits do you love the, the, the most? Most, or which uh, of all of these fruits do you love the most? Select all that apply. And so that's going to export here in these columns one column per item on the survey that you have per item response on that select uh, all that apply item. And then the zeros represent people who did not select that. And then the ones represent people who did select that particular item. Now, one way that I would think about doing this is first setting up a summary table sheet. So I made a new sheet down here, and it was just called summary table. And so this is what my summary table is going to look like. And we're going to create some pivot tables that will import directly into this summary table. Okay, So what we're going to do is go to our data tab here, and we're first going to add a pivot table. So we're going to do this for every single column that you have a response item for select all that apply. And so this that's going to take a little bit of time, but I'm going to do this on one column column right here. And then I'm going to take you through the whole process on how I would import that data into the summary table. And then you can do the rest of the columns um, sort of on your own. We'll see how long this takes. So the first thing that I want to do is set up a pivot table for my entire data set. So I'm going to select all of the columns right here. We're going to go to insert and I'm going to click on the pivot table button. We're going to say from table range. And then you get this pop up here that says, do you want the pivot table to be in this sheet or a new sheet? I always select new sheet. So it's already set to new worksheet. So we're going to say, OK. This gives me a, a pivot table on the new worksheet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this sheet pivot table just so that I um, can keep things sort of clear for me, pivot table. Um, and actually, I'm going to actually say pivot tables plural because we're going to have multiple of these. So in the pivot table here, we're going to create a pivot table. First, I want to, um, I don't want to just select the blueberry over here. These are my pivot table fields. So you see that each column in my pivot, uh, each column in my data set uh, is shown over here. And I'm going to take the ID column, the number of survey responses, and I'm going to drag this into the values box right here. Now it gives you this sum of ID. That's meaningless to us. We actually want to change this to count because right now it's summing the total of the ID numbers, which doesn't mean anything to us. We want to we want to have it uh, give us a count, which means the number of respondents in that column. So I'm going to click on the drop down menu here, go to value settings, and then we're going to switch sum to count, and then click OK. And now I'm going to. Um, maximize this window just a little bit so you can see here. Uh, it's Now it says count of ID, and it says we have 20 respondents. So that's perfect. So I'm actually just going to keep this right here. We're always going to keep that up there. And I'm going to copy, so Control-C, 
I'm just going to go a few rows down. I like to keep at least two or three rows between my pivot tables when I'm copying. And I'm going to push Control V to paste. Now that copies the pivot table. And you can see over here, we have the, the same exact pivot table there. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this new pivot table. We're going to keep the count of ID here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the count of I, I'm going to drag the ID column one more time. I'm going to put it right below the values. And now instead of sum of ID, I'm going to just like we did before value settings and change this to count again. And now I'm going to go to this show values as tab. And I'm right now it's set to no calculation, but I'm going to set it to sum of uh, total. Let's see, I think it's going to be the sum of columns. So we're going to do this sum of column to, or uh, percentage of column total. Okay, I'm going to do that and then push OK. And now you can see that I have a count and I have a percent. That's 100% because we have 20 people in there in our sample. I'm going to actually just um, click on this percent sign up here so that we get rid of those decimals. We probably don't need those. And now what I'm going to do with uh, my cell activated here in this pivot table, I'm going to take the blueberry and I'm going to drag it down to rows. And now this is my blueberry data from that select all that apply data. So it tells me that uh, for the zeros, these are the people who did not select it. 15 people did not select blueberry and five people did select blueberry. And that's 20, that represents 25% of my sample. Now I'm going to keep the blanks here because if a blank shows up here in the counts, that just means that I failed to put an ID number in that column. And so this is kind of just like a data validation check for me. So this should always be blank and this should always be 0%. If the blank was not, uh, if the blank was something other than 0%, then I know I have to go back to my original data tab and make sure that the ID column is completely filled out, okay? So what you can do here is you can always click on the table and you can see that it says blueberry down here in the rows. But you can also update the text here. So I'll just say, I'll just update the text to blueberry. And that will be a nice check for me to do. Now you have to make sure that whatever you type here is the correct thing because if this was a different fruit, I could still type blueberry up here. And so that could be a little bit confusing. So just make sure that you're double checking those things when you do this. Now I have this one pivot table here. Now I'm gonna go over uh, back over to my summary table that I made right here. In this cell right here, uh, next to Blueberry under the count, I'm just going to pull that pivot table data into that cell by linking the two. And all you need to do in order to do that is type an equal sign. So type equals, go back to the pivot table tab, and then point your cell to wherever you want it to pull from. And in this case, I want it to pull from the ones, right? So I want it to pull from the people who selected Blueberry. So I'm going to click on that tab. I'm going to push Enter. It will go back to my table here, and you can see that I have five. I'm going to do the same thing for percent equals pivot table 25 percent. I'm going to click on the 25 percent because that's how many people selected on the blueberry. Push enter and now you see 25 percent. Now I'm going to do this exact same process for all of the other options that could be selected in that select all that apply data. Now right here I have the end column so these would be the number of survey respondents and so I'm going to do that same thing with that top data table uh, t that top pivot table that I created that gives me the count of survey responses. So I'm going to go ahead and type equals Go back to pivot table. Here's my count right here. Click on that, click enter, and now we have 20. And if we wanted to, you can see that, well, if you go back to the pivot table, you can see that right here, we don't have the percent because we did not um, pull that ID column down a second time. And we can go ahead and do that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the ID column back down to the values tab. Click on that drop down menu. We don't want the sum of ID, we want the count. And then we want to go to show values as. In the drop down menu, we're going to do percent of column total. And now it gives me that 100% right there. I'll get rid of the decimals there. And then what we can do here, back on the summary table, if we want just to make sure that that um, aligns, I'll go ahead and point to that cell and equal enter. So that's what you have to do in order to do that. Now, in the pivot table, or now in the data tab, when you add more data here, it do, the ID number doesn't necessarily make a difference for the pivot table. There just needs to be something in it. So you don't have to necessarily worry about the order at which um, you're putting in that ID data. So let's just say we have some new data here. Um, I'm going to type it in. You could also just paste it in right below. 
So 21, I'll just say 0, 0, 0. Maybe they just selected grape, 0. And then that's at 0 for none of these. I'm going to go down. I'll enter another one, 0. Maybe they selected orange and strawberry, 0, 0, 0. And then let's just go ahead, and I'm going to copy these, copy and paste, just so you can see how that would look there. Push escape so that it stops um, these sort of dynamic uh, copy lines there. And now what we need to do is go back over to pivot table. You see that nothing has changed, even though we've added more data. Now what you need to do is, with your cell inside one of these pivot tables, you need to go up to the pivot table analyze tab, and then click on refresh, and then say refresh all. And when you refresh all, that pulls the rest of the new data into those pivot tables. So you can see it updated to 24. And then it updated uh, the percent, the number of blueberry. Nobody, nobody knew selected blueberry, so we still have five. But the percentage is updated because we have more data in that tab. Now, if I wanted to do this, uh, and then also you can see that the summary table also updated from 25% to 21% there. Okay. So now what I'll, I'll, I'll uh, do for the rest of these is I'm going to copy this pivot table here, copy, paste, Control V. And I'm going to take the blueberry out, and I'm going to drag orange in. And now this would be orange. And you can see that the blueberry is still labeled here, so you have to make sure to update that text if you want to do that. And we can see 14 people selected orange. And so now I'm going to go back to my summary table. I'm going to type equals, go back to my pivot table, and we'll click on that cell there for orange. And then I'll do the same thing for the percent. All right, so you're going to do that entire process for the rest of the items that you have in your table, and you'll get a really nice summary table that way. And then what you want to do, if you wanted to copy this, maybe paste it into a Word report or something like this, you have to make sure, I'm going to push Control-C, and then over here, I'm just going to right-click and say, paste special, this number sign right here, this is going to paste as values, um, because you don't want to paste um, the format. So it doesn't look uh, as nice there. It's not going to be as formatted as we did before. You're going to have to work with that a little bit. But now, the formulas aren't there anymore. You can just copy and paste uh, the direct data and the, and the values there. I'm going to go ahead and just delete this. And then let's see what happens if I paste, if I just paste it as normal, Control V. You can see then the, there's zeros here because it's now, if you click in this cell, you can see it's pulling from a different cell on that pivot table where, there, where there's no data. So if you want to copy this and paste it, you just have to make sure to paste them as values and not just a regular control C and control V, okay? All right, so I hope that helps, and I think it should. I'm just going to go ahead and make no borders on that. Um, I hope that helps. I think uh, it's a pretty easy process once uh, you kind of get the hang of it, and you're going to have to go through and do that one by one. It's a little bit of time to set up. But then you will have a nice uh, select all data table that will continue to update as you collect more survey responses and paste it in to that data source tab. I hope you like this video, Liz, and I hope it's helpful. If it is, please give it a thumbs up. And anyone else who's watching, I hope you will click subscribe, subscribe to my channel, and then click the bell next to it uh, every time you I post a new data design video in Excel, PowerPoint, or Word, you will get notified uh, every time that video drops. I had a great time making this for you. Thanks again, Liz, for the question, and I can't wait to see you all next time.